It's been a while, but welcome to the patch 1.6 video review for Legends of Runeterra. Today, we'll be talking about the latest balance changes happening for this patch. Just like in the previous video, I'll briefly touch on the developer notes. Then, I'll be talking about the card changes, and finally, I'll talk briefly about the new Spirit Blossom event that's coming to the game. I won't be reviewing the rest of the notes like the expedition changes or the bug fixes, so feel free to check out those other changes in the patch notes themselves. I'll leave a link in the video description to that. As usual, I'll have timestamps in the video description and as a pinned comment below for anyone that wants to skip to specific cards. Let's jump into it. As always, things open up with some developer notes from the Legends of Runeterra team. It's pretty much been known for a while that this particular patch would focus on nerfs to several cards, and that's exactly what we're getting when it comes to Ionia in general, Heimerdinger, and perhaps most importantly, the Noxus package that we've been seeing across several different quote-unquote aggro decks for the past month or so. I don't think this was actually the fastest meta we've been in. I think that title still goes to burn aggro since that deck was still faster than the crop of Noxus decks we've had recently. In my opinion though, this is the most polarizing meta we've had for lack of a better word. Uh, traditional mid-range strategies were completely pushed out, and yet, once again my opinion, we haven't had a true aggro deck either. Instead, Noxus Harrowing and Scouts, despite being the fastest decks recently, are decks that fall under a category that I'd call aggressive mid-range instead of actual aggro decks. Which also explains why Karma Ezreal has been doing well the past few weeks, a deck that's notoriously weak to aggro, if we're talking about rank ladder. So basically you either play these aggressive mid-range decks, or you play control in the form of Shadow Isles or the more combo style Karma Ezreal, with no place for decks in between. But I digress. Let's talk about the card changes, starting with the champions. First up we have Heimerdinger. So, in a nutshell, the 4 mana Fearsome Turret now costs 3 mana, the 6 mana Overwhelm Turret now costs 4 mana, and the 3 mana Elusive Turret now costs 6. I do think these changes make Heimerdinger more fair overall, but we need to stress that on the Master's Ladder, Vi Heimerdinger has already been on the downswing the past week or so, and hasn't been putting up the win rates it has in the past. This change is a nerf for sure, but I think the real nail in the coffin is actually another card get, that got nerfed that was always played with Heimerdinger, which we'll talk about later. I think there is still a Heimerdinger deck out there that's viable, but the decks that we've come to know will have to be completely reworked. I don't think any Ionia-based Heimerdinger deck will survive this change. Uh, Demacia-based versions weren't hit quite as hard by these changes since Remembrance is a very good 6-mana spell but even those versions might not survive. You don't want to be forced to choose between playing Heimerdinger or Lux on round six. And while other region pairings sound interesting, Heimer has always paired best with regions that have spells that can protect their units while having decent removal tools. Ionia and Demacia do that better than any other region in the game right now. So it doesn't look good for Heimer, but we'll see. Uh, next we have Braum, whose level 1 is now a 0-5, which is down from a 1-5, and his level 2 is now a 1-6, down from being a 2-6. Uh, while I do think Braum was a bit overtuned from the last major balance patch, and needed to be toned back down, I was hoping it would be done without removing its power stat. Uh, I've long said since open beta that in order for Braum to be good, he needed to have an actual power stat so he can fight for the board back when he was a 3-mana 0-5. He might still be okay, but I'm skeptical. This change is an indirect buff to aggro decks, however, who hated this card since they had no real way of removing him. Now, once again, they don't have to since their attackers won't get removed by Braum anymore. I think a few of the Braum decks we've started seeing will go away now. And the final champion that's being changed is Ignivia, which is now a 0-1 down from being a 0-2. So another recently buffed champion that's being toned back down, but in this case it's not Anivia herself, but the egg she transforms into after she dies. I really like this change because Anivia is a very sticky unit and is extremely hard to remove completely. For most decks, your only chance was to find the extra point of damage you needed to finish the egg off on another turn, but you had to do it before you reached round 10, which isn't a lot of time. And even then, there was Rekindler to worry about. 
Uh, this makes Anivia easier to remove not only for other Shadow Isles decks, but Bilgewater decks as well, since both have access to several ping effects. Moving on to the followers and spells, uh, starting with Relentless Pursuit, which is now a slow spell instead of a fast spell. Uh, this is a nerf, but it's not as big a deal as you might think. A lot of times the normal play pattern for Relentless Pursuit would be to play it like a slow speed spell anyway. Uh, the fact that this was fast speed was just icing on the cake. There were very few situations where the fast speed actually mattered in the decks that played this card. So I don't expect much to change. This will still see play in specific Demacia decks like Scouts or Lucian Zed. It'll be business as usual. Next is Arena Bookie, uh, who is now a 2 mana 2-2 two, two, instead of a 3 mana 2-1. Uh, this is an interesting change. Arena Bookie is a lot better with this new stat line and reduced cost. Uh, it's clearly aimed at discard aggro, but I question if it'll be enough. I feel like 2-2s two for 2 mana, while not bad in their own right, are often pretty underwhelming since this game has focused so much on 2-drops that are either 2-3s or 3-2s. 2-2s trade against the latter, but not the former, and 2-3s have been the premium stat line for a 2-drop for months now. I realize this could be because of Crimson Disciple just dominating the meta since the release of Rising Tides, and even before then, but that might change since she's been toned down, and we'll talk about that in a bit. I have a feeling Bookie is going to end up even better than I think, so I'll be keeping an eye on it. Uh, best case scenario is that discard aggro does end up being good, and this card will be a staple in that deck especially if it's running Draven, because Arena Bookie is really, really good with Draven, since you just end up discarding spinning axes to get to the other cards in your deck. Next, we have Basilisk Rider, who is now a 4-3 instead of a 5-3. Another card that saw a big buff a month ago that's being dialed back. Uh, I would have liked Basilisk Rider to go back to his old stat line, to be honest, but that would defeat the purpose of his buff in patch 1.4 and he literally saw no play before that patch. Uh, I just hope this is a nice middle ground. As a 5-4 when activated, he's still going to be tough to remove cleanly since 4 health is way harder to remove than 3 health in this game, but at least he won't feel as bad to block. That is, if the Noxus card package we've come to know even survives this round of nerfs, and the next card we'll be talking about will likely be the deciding factor when it comes to that. And that next card is Crimson Disciple. Uh, who now deals one damage to the enemy nexus instead of two damage whenever she survives damage. I'm not surprised by this at all, but this is also not the change I was personally hoping for. Now, let me be clear, I do believe this card has the most impact in the entire Noxus package. However, I'm in the minority group when I say that as good as this card was, I don't think Crimson Disciple itself necessarily needed to be nerfed. I actually think Transfusion has been the real problem. It's even more backbreaking in more scenarios than Crimson Disciple ever was, and has even less counterplay than Crimson Disciple did. I think Transfusion could have been nerfed instead without completely gutting the Noxus package, and Noxus would have felt more fair to play against. Uh, regardless, this nerf is a pretty big blow to Noxus as we know it. I will admit this change actually does nerf Transfusion indirectly, since Disciple was its best target, but Disciple was a key unit in the Noxus package and the glue that held things together in a way that even Transfusion couldn't do. Uh, this also nerfs Imperial Demolitionist for obvious reasons. Uh, again, these indirect nerfs point back to what I said about this card having the most impact in Noxus. I agree with that. I just think Noxus could have been toned down without having to touch this card. Uh, next, we have Legion Grenadier, who is now a 3-2 instead of a 3-1 and the Last Breath ability now deals one damage to the enemy Nexus instead of two. This was a change I didn't see coming, and this is also where I think the team is overshooting the Noxus nerfs a bit. Uh, that may not necessarily be a bad thing in itself, since they can always correct in a future balance patch, but I'm gonna go ahead and call this a straight up nerf. Uh, the one point increase in health does mean that Grenadier no longer dies to ping effects like Vilefeast, but that doesn't make up for the fact that this now only does one damage to the Nexus. Before, people were terrified of killing Grenadier, making it tough to deal with. 
2 damage was a lot when coupled with the other Noxus cards that had effects that also dealt 2 damage or more. Those effects compounded very quickly. Now players don't care about this card and will kill it freely with any random card they have that deals 2 damage, unit or otherwise. They'll take their 1 damage and move on. A Grenadier will be little more than a speed bump for opposing players, and I'm willing to bet that it's actually on the road to no longer seeing any play. Next we have Flash of Brilliance, which now costs 4 mana, which is up from 3 mana. Uh, despite the changes to the Heimerdinger himself, this is the nerf I was talking about that may actually put the nail in the coffin for Heimer decks. Flash going up to 4 mana is huge. Uh, this has always been a card that's been pretty much exclusive to Heimer decks since he utilized it so much better than other champions. Even better than someone like Lee Sin, who saw some early er experimentation with Flash. Uh, you played this for 3 mana, you get an elusive turret for free, and refill your spell mana, effectively making this cost 0 mana. Now it effectively costs 1 mana, which doesn't sound bad at first, but now you're not able to play your Heimerdinger safely until turn 6, which hurts Vyheimer and Luxheimer, since you want to play Lux on turn 6 usually, not Heimerdinger and you now get an Overwhelm turret instead of an Elusive turret, which isn't quite as good. All that being said, I'm glad this got nerfed. Flash introduced RNG that was a bit too easy to access, and I, as well as others, have definitely lost games to Heimer players that high-rolled a game-winning spell off of Flash that I otherwise would have won. Like I said, if Heimer is going to continue to be a deck, it'll need to be completely rebuilt from the ground up. Next we have Sump Dredger. Uh, which is now 3 mana instead of 2 mana, and now states to play me, discard 1 and draw 1, instead of to play me, discard 1. So this is the first of two buffs specific to discard aggro, unless we're also counting arena bookie, which we might have to based on what I talked about earlier. Uh, discard aggro typically has not played Sump Dredger in the past. Any attempt to include it resulted in failure, including my own attempts. Uh, I'm excited about this change and would say it's a buff, despite the cost increase. However, I think that the cost increase wasn't actually needed and that this card still would have been balanced at two mana. One of Sump Dredger's biggest problems was that despite being overstatted when it was at two mana, it doesn't have any evasion type abilities that allow it to guarantee Nexus damage. And by evasion abilities, I mean keywords that make it hard to block like elusive, overwhelm, or fearsome. A lot of times when I played this card, it would just get chump blocked until it died. Uh, for that reason alone, Sump Dredger still might not see play, even with these changes, but we'll have to see. Next is Zonite Urchin, uh, which now states to play me, discard one and draw one, instead of last breath, draw one, to play me, discard one. This is the second buff to discard aggro, and this is much more compelling. Zonite Urchin was another card that didn't see play in the most successful discard aggro decks either, for understandable reasons. Aggro usually doesn't want to pay up front for a card, especially if it's a one drop. However, I will say I did some fairly recent testing during patch 1.4 and was able to get discard aggro built in a way where you could consistently play the old version of this card on turn one for very little drawback and still get a pretty good win rate overall. I've definitely criticized discard aggro in the past saying that it's too inconsistent but recently my faith in the deck has been restored and I'm very excited about this change. I don't know if discard aggro should play Sump Dredger now, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it, it should play this card and have the deck built in a way where the drawback isn't a drawback at all. Next we have Shadow Assassin, who is now a 1-2, uh, down from a 2-2. At one point, this card was on Riot's watch list as far as balance changes go, but nothing ever actually happened because the team was testing several different nerfs for this card, but none of them felt good. One of those including nerfing this to a 2-1. I think people expected this to be changed to a 2-1, not a 1-2. I do like this change, and while I acknowledge that there should be good cards in a card game that you just play no matter what, I'm not the biggest fan of auto-includes when there are too many. And this card has definitely been an auto-include for every Ionia deck out there in addition to several other cards. As much as this hurts for slower Ionia decks, I think elusives get hit even harder. Uh, elusives barely wanted to play a 2-2 elusive for 3 mana that drew a card, but a 1-2 for the same cost? Uh, I think elusive decks will cut this card. 
particularly Elusive Burn. Kinko Elusive's the Freljord variant might keep this card around, but I have my doubts. Uh, next we have Steel Tempest, which now costs 2 mana instead of 3 mana. Uh, this is a nice buff, but I don't think it's super impactful. Steel Tempest did see play in Heimerdinger decks back in open beta before Vi was ever a card. Other than that though, this card almost exclusively saw play in Yasuo decks, but nowadays it's been cut in favor of Concussive Palm. So basically we don't see this card unless it's through an extra copy of Yasuo since this is his champion spell. What is nice is that you'll now be able to use Steel Tempest and follow it up with Ravenous Flock using just spell mana. Again, a nice buff, but I don't think people are going to go crazy and start putting this card in their decks again. Next we have River Shaper, uh, who is now a 2-2 instead of a 2-1. This is probably the change I'm least excited about. I think this buff will do nothing for River Shaper. Uh, while this did see some play during open beta, the problem with River Shaper now is that a card called Deep Meditation exists, which does the same thing as River Shaper, but better. Even with Deep Meditation getting nerfed to 5 mana a while back, it's still better than this card, which needs to strike to even draw a spell. Meaning River Shaper could die before you ever get the effect, and it's only one spell as opposed to two spells from Deep Meditation at burst speed. River Shaper would either need a more significant buff, maybe 2 or 3-3, three, three, in order to see play, or Deep Meditation would need a significant nerf before players ever consider using this card again. Next we have Will of Ionia, which now costs 5 mana, which is up from 4 mana. Uh, I'm just going to start off by saying that I don't agree with this nerf at all. Uh, I did state earlier that I wasn't a fan of auto-includes, and Will of Ionia has definitely been an auto-include in every Ionia deck up until now. But I think 4 mana was fairly costed. Uh, I feel like a lot of people wanted this card nerfed because they felt it was too efficient in dealing with more expensive units in this game, especially certain champions. In particular, the units that don't actually do anything on the turn they come down. So basically units that have no other immediate effect when played, other than just dropping down another body with stats. Personally, I feel like most of those types of units shouldn't be in anyone's deck anyway, unless it has a very specific role in a very specific game plan. A Minotaur Reckoner and Yasuo decks comes to mind. It just seems like people were butthurt that their 6 mana unit that didn't do anything when they played it would just get bounced back to their hand for 4 mana. Will of Ionia doesn't even kill the unit, you just lose tempo, which is big, but at least your unit isn't actually dead. I think we do need to establish how much mana is considered okay to spend on a unit that has no extra effect when it comes into play. In a game like Hearthstone that also has guaranteed mana, that cost was 6. Apparently we want it to be higher than 6 mana in this game with this nerf. So yeah, not a fan of it. Uh, it will be very rare to see 3 copies of this card in any Ionia deck going forward. Next we have Golden Narwhal, which is now a 2 mana 2-3 two, instead of a 3 mana 2-4. Uh, I would say this is a buff, but Golden Narwhal has always been such an awkward card when looked at on its own. It hasn't seen any serious play so far. I think if there was any deck a card like this would see play in, it would be a deck running either Demacia or Ionia. Because of the vulnerable effect, I think it needs to be played in a region that can use spells to protect it or buff it permanently. Uh, Demacia and Ionia are good at those things, and even Freljord is decent at it. Again, I think this is a buff, it's just hard for me to see where it would fit competitively. And finally we have Hunting Fleet, which is now 4 mana 6-6 six, six instead of a 5 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. This buff I'm more excited about, yes it goes hand in hand with Golden Narwhal to an extent, but I'm honestly a little surprised that this card hasn't been seeing more play since it's a it was a 5 mana 7-7 seven, seven, with a pretty minor drawback. A 4 mana 6-6 six, six is even better, especially since there aren't a ton of good 4 drops in Legends of Runeterra that are well statted for the cost. Usually the 4 drops that get played in this game have lower stats than normal because they have some type of other strong effect when they get played. I really would like to see this card more, as long as this is a healthy buff of course. Finally let's talk a little bit about the new event that's coming to Legends of Runeterra, the Spirit Blossom Festival. This event actually coincides with League of Legends as well, who is having the exact same event. 
Events were something that Riot mentioned back in May in a YouTube video where they discussed the roadmap for Legends of Runeterra for the rest of this year into early 2021. They stated that the first event would start in July and they are right on schedule. So the Spirit Blossom event will have a new lab, new quests and rewards for completing those quests and an event pass that you can buy to get access to premium cosmetic items throughout the event with more to come in August. From what the team has shown right now, the event pass includes a new guardian that's instantly unlocked when you buy it, five new variations on existing guardians, four new card backs, and five new emotes. Now, if you don't buy the event pass, there are still other rewards you can get for free, like shards, an ex expedition token, an epic wild card, and a random champion card. Uh, there are more details on how you can earn these rewards and then dedicated post about the event on the Legends of Runeterra website. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. But that's it from me. The rest of the changes are for Expedition, more details on the new Spirit Blossom Festival event that I didn't cover in this video, additional cosmetics, new deck bundles, and bug fixes. So again, feel free to check out the patch notes on those in the link in the video description below. If you guys made it to the end, thank you so much for the support. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by hitting the like button below and leaving a comment. I appreciate constructive criticism and feedback since I'm always looking to do things better. If you don't want to miss out on future videos, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the notification bell below as well. Also, feel free to check out all the other social media handles you can find me at. Twitter, Twitch, and our community Discord. Links to everything are in the video description below. Thanks again for taking time out of your day to watch this, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.